So this will be the last in this series on book recommendations. I've already given five, uh, but this one is going to be sort of a bonus or frosting on the cake, so to speak, because in the last one, I sort of evolved the, the conversation to a faith-oriented approach, namely true pure land Buddhism or Jodo Shenshu, or as it's commonly known now as Shin Buddhism. This, of course, again, is the teaching of Shinran Shonen in 13th century Japan, where he basically was teaching a system of pure grace. Now, the implications of that system, as I've indicated in the previous video, as well as in many other videos, is that once that faith, once that entrusting occurs, uh, there is no obligation to perform any other act, whether it be religious or otherwise. And so the one thing we do in, uh, in the Shin Buddhist uh, tradition in terms of our so-called practice which is really a non-practice, is to recite the name Namu Amida Butsu, basically in gratitude, not to attain anything. In that sense, it's similar to Zen Buddhism, where again, there's no real uh, effort to attain something. Uh, and so uh, both in Zen and in Shin Buddhism, we see the evolution, as well as in other forms of Buddhism, frankly, Tendai and other forms, we see the evolution toward uh, a real uh, appreciation for and an emphasis on art. In other words, what is there that goes beyond words and concepts and phrases and doctrines and texts? Well, it's art. And there, there have been amazing uh, artistic endeavors within the Buddhist tradition, as there have been in other religious traditions. So this is an impulse. This is a tendency, I think, that unfolds in the context of the spiritual experience. Uh, within, within pure land Buddhism, uh, this is often involved depictions of Amida Buddha, of Kuan Yin, uh, Bodhisattva, whether it be in painting or statues. And of course, the ultimate uh, characterization that true pure land Buddhists look to is uh, the calligraphy that, that sort of shows in six characters, Namu Amida Butsu. But in any case, if you've even glanced briefly around at my channel, you re recognize that I greatly appreciate and enjoy Asian art uh, of all types. And uh, so the thing I would leave you with in terms of a final recommendation after talking about Huxley's perennial philosophy, about Raula's What the Buddha Taught, uh, about the Diamond Sutra, the Threefold Lotus Sutra, and finally the Tani Show, the last book that I'll leave you to consider uh, in, in your perhaps uh, accumulation of a, a sort of a library of uh, John's recommendations, if you will, is called Pure Land Buddhist Painting, which was put together by Josie Okazaki, translated and adapted by Elizabeth Ten Grotenhus. And this was part of the Japanese Arts Library series with a general editor of John Rosenfield, with the cooperation of various uh, national museums within Japan. And so this book, which is really a gem, it's not necessarily the best in terms of, you know, an abundance of color pictures, but uh, it certainly has some share of those. But it gives a history of how sort of artistic expressions, particularly in terms of painting, evolve within the Pure Land tradition. And so one reviewer on Amazon, for example, said, if you are into Pure Land Buddhism, buy this book in capital letters. You will use and enjoy it for many years. And he or she goes on in, in the uh, review that they've left uh, on Amazon to say, Though sparse in colored works, this book fully makes up for that by its detailed coverage of other black and white Pure Land paintings and works of art. And with more information on the actual practice of Pure Land Buddhism, both in the past and current, than I found in any other book. The first chapter alone, with its history of the beginnings of Pure Land, is worth the price. It's definitely a book to be kept and explored for years to come. And one aspect that I'll mention, I think, that's in that first chapter, you may or may not recall that Shinran, uh, he gives a lot of credit to the patriarchs within Shin Buddhism in his various writings, such as in the, the his masterwork, the Kaogao Shinsho. 
And so, you know, in the first chapter of this particular uh, book about uh, Pure Land painting, it talks a bit about the various patriarchs and again shows pictures of some of them. And I think that's helpful to have sort of pictorial representations in our mind when we uh, when we read about and consider the the wisdom of some of these past masters. Uh, and of course, ultimately, uh, we focus in on the what I've referred to in the previous video as the Sambhogakaya, the spiritual level entities, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that reside there in order to provide us with a sense of pleasure and, and salvation, really. Uh, so, you know, this is the one I'll leave you with, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little series of videos on book recommendations. And again, I would encourage uh, any of you that are so inclined to to make a note in the comments about what, what books you would recommend to fellow seekers within the uh, Buddha Dharma. Namo Mita Bodhis. Namo Mita Bodhis. Namo Mita Bodhis.